The SEC and Gary have it wrong. XRP isn't a security, it's a computer code. And even if XRP was sold as a security, doesn't mean it always is. Kind of like Pokemon cards. When Pokemon cards were first created, it's for a game. Now some people are using Pokemon cards as securities. Seems like the SEC has things wrong. And if you want to fix crypto hack schemes and all that naughtiness, there's one group we should go over that would take care of the majority of the mess that we have in the Crypto Web 3 space. Ooh, daddy, am I feeling it today. Just got done with over four hours and 13 minutes of fasted training, hiking, and climbing. I'll share that with you at the end. If you're interested, Bitcoin sitting at 23,018, ETH 1637, XRP falling below that 40 cent mark. We're going to talk about that. XLM sitting at 9.1. All right, here's XRP. You can see, right? Like I said, we got to be above 40 before we hit this purple line, which is February 14th, Valentine's Day, gentlemen. And a real quick note from Editor Klaus. When you take your Valentine's date out on the 14th, be sure not to mention CPI data. That kind of conversation sticks within this group. But it's also when we get CPI data next. Like I said in the earlier video, I would rather have us be above 40 when CPI data hits rather than wasting our time at getting through that ceiling and then moving forward from there. Let's keep our eyes open on the price of XRP as we get closer to the 14th. Visa makes a bold move into the crypto world with stable coin settlements. All right. You're going to be bummed when you hear who they're using, but it's more the concept behind it. Incorporating blockchain tech into existing networks. However, due to the fact that settlements, we're talking traditional ones, are still handled through the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, SWIFT system, the payment giant has not been able to transfer money as often as it would want. Talking about Visa. This has hampered its capacity to move money. Sheffield said in order to get over this obstacle, Visa has been conducting tests whether to see it's possible to accept settlement payments using stable coins on the Ethereum blockchain. And I know, I know, I know. A lot of you out there aren't ETH fans, but here's the deal. Swift it takes too much time, right? Traditional ACH movement of money, you can have several days. And sometimes if we're talking foreign currencies, it can take over a week to settle money. But we know with blockchain and stable coins, you could do it like that. Even on the slower chains like Ethereum. Boy, it would have been nice if they would have used a product, I don't know, from Stellar or Ripple Labs. Check out the hat. But the key here is that Visa and more people around the world are recognizing that the way money moves now is very dated. It's limited. Money should move fast, right? The majority of our money is digital. So why should it take so long to clear? Do I wish Visa would have worked with a different blockchain? Of course, but I'm glad they're seeing that there are constraints with traditional finance and that blockchain can solve those problems. Now, how do we fix crypto? Okay, it's not about rags. It's not about banks in England banning people from buying crypto. I did a story about that, by the way. More and more banks are banning people from buying crypto. Why? The regs aren't there, so the banks are taking it on to themselves. North Korean hackers linked to 45% of crypto theft in 2022. The report, which broke down crypto's terrible losses, highlighted the month of March and October as peak periods with an alarming record amount of hacks. 55 separate in those two months, totaling 1.4 billion. All right, and guess what? As always, any article you see in this video will be linked in the description below. Got the chart for total value stolen in crypto hacks, along with all of that other juicy, juicy action that I know you love to see on this channel. But look at this, 3.8 billion, higher than the year before. So we are talking 7.1 billion in the last two years. So I get that countries want to make regs and so forth, but if we stop this one hacker group, you're telling me we could have fixed 45% worth of the crypto theft in 2022? We don't need to make new regs. We just have to use existing laws and go after the criminals. Sounds a lot like gun control laws, doesn't it, everyone? And don't worry, everyone. Pokemon card and XRP comparison is coming on up. You're guaranteed to love it. Meme coin economy swells by $5.8 billion in less than a month, suggesting the demand for meme tokens is still high. A lot of us out there thought meme would die, but no. Again, another use case, branding. We've got the use case of utility. Well, we've got the use case of meme. The meme coin economy has grown significantly over the past 27 days, increasing 34% against the U.S. dollar. The largest meme coin by market capitalization, Doge, has risen almost 30% in the past month, while the second largest meme coin, SHIB, has gone up 71.9% in 30 days. Since January 9th of this year, the overall value of the meme token economy has increased 
by 5.8 billion. So there is still reason to have much wow and to have mean coins. All right, now let's talk about Pokemon cards in XRP. You're going to love this, and it's going to make you want to go out there and buy some Pokemon cards. Why Pro Ripple Lawyer says XRP can't be classed as a security even if it was sold as one. XRP remains a digital code by my man John Dean. In a detailed Twitter thread on Friday, Crypto Law founder John Dean asserted that XRP remains a digital code, even if Ripple sold it as an investment contract in the past or still doing so now. Deet noted that just because someone used Bitcoin as a security, it didn't turn into a security. Similarly, the LBOI case, the judge ruled that LBOI sold LBC as an investment contract when it made direct sales. Hmm. The lawyer's view remains that a software code and nothing else, referring to XRP. So that brings me back now to the whole idea of Pokemon cards. And this is why I believe we needed updated regs and rules when it comes to crypto. Think of Pokemon cards. 20 plus years ago, when they were first starting out, they were used as game playing collectible pieces. There was no real value back then. People were taking first gens and writing notes on them and stuff like that. I even have a first gen Blastoise that some kid wrote their name on. It was pretty cool. I bought it for a couple bucks. But yeah, first gen. And I'm like, whoa. And it was one of the hollows too. Yeah. So you know that was worth some big ass money. But anyways, my point is this. People originally bought Pokemon cards to play a game but now you have some people out there that purposely buy pokemon cards to hold them let other people the markets do work on them and then hopefully sell them later like a security right but does that mean now that all pokemon cards are securities no the original intent of the pokemon cards was to be a game playing card and a collectible for people that were into that genre since then though because the popularity of it has risen just like xrp here over the last several years you see now that people are taking advantage of it as a security they're buying pokemon cards not to play with their kids but in order to make money down the road as the value of it goes up right the idea that someone else is going to put effort into it and you're going to reap the rewards of that purchase of the security and i think we have to draw a parallel here and that's why i think we needed updated regs and rules because just like pokemon cards xrp has a multitude of uses in fact a bunch of you watching this video right now yes are using xrp as a security but does that mean that xrp itself is a security no because you can use it in a whole bunch of ways just like computer code like Deaton said. So the next time someone says to you, XRP, crypto, it's all security, I want you to bring up Pokemon cards. And how when Pokemon cards first came out, it was all for a game. Now you've got people spending 40000 a box on first-gen goodies with the speculative action that you're going to roll into a Charizard or something like that. Hacking in crypto scams and schemes. Do we need new laws? Well, yeah, I mean, if you consider that previous segment, I just did yes. Or we could go after the bad actors. It's very similar to governments out there trying to pass more strict gun control laws. You know, the pew pew stuff. Let's not get screwed by the algorithms. But think about that. Instead of going after the criminals that are already abusing current laws, they always want to make more, restrict it more, blah, 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 blah. That doesn't fix the problem. Same thing with crypto, right? Because you're always going to have those bad actors, right? Those nefarious bad actors out there, Lazarus Group, North Korea action that are going to exploit any protective law you put in the books. So if we want crypto to be safer, maybe what we should do is go after the biggest groups that are causing nearly half the theft in the crypto industry in 2022. Even if you were to cut that down in half and knock it down to a quarter, that'd be a huge gain for crypto as a whole and would save more money than any of these rags, any of these banks out there in England that are just trying to stop you from putting money into crypto and all that. Nope. Go after the bad actors rather than just making new arbitrary laws that aren't going to help at all because the bad actors are going to find ways around it. In Visa, publicly recognizing that Swift has definite settlement issues. So what are they doing? They're going to blockchain, baby. Yes, I know. We wish they probably would have picked a chain, I don't know, a little bit quicker than ETH. But hey, look. I get it, and this is a good start in the right direction for crypto in Web3. Now, earlier I mentioned that I had done some fasted hiking training. What I'm going to do is link my second channel right here. I'm going to make a video next few days about that trip, right? About that action right there. Check out that channel. Now, check this video out, though, if you want to learn more about crypto and Web3. First, subscribe to my second channel, learn about fasted training, hardcore. Second, Crypto Web 3 action. Now, until more news breaks, I am going to finally eat today and break my fast. You cool cats, have a great rest of your day.